Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As some of you have seen before, this is my gas furnace. For the last number of years, we've heated the house with this exclusively. Uh, middle of the winter, gas bills will be around $65, nothing crazy. Uh, but as of last year, the local utility was bought out by the big corporation Enbridge, and ever since then, they have doubled, almost tripled the price of gas. Uh, this is an example of our gas bill for last month. This is just the tankless water heater. You can see we paid about $7 for our actual gas usage, and the total bill came to $41 after the nice $24 customer fee and some other taxes. Now, as you can see, that was 31 cubic meters for the last 30 days. So if you compare that to last year, the 237 cubic meters, you can imagine that gas bill was pretty high. So for the month of October and hopefully November, I'm going to be turning off the furnace other than the fan for circulation, trying not to use any gas and just relying on solar to heat our house. So for about two weeks since the weather turned cold on us, I've been heating the house exclusively with the EG4 solar hybrid heat pump. You guys know I'm a big fan of this thing. It's very efficient. It's kicking out about 110 degrees supply air right now, and that's only on about 500 watts. Uh, we are running all on solar today. Even though it's pretty cloudy, I don't have it turned up too high, so we are able to go 100% off-grid. We try to keep the house between 68 and 70. We do like it a little bit cooler in here and uh, that's working in our favor right now because it's getting down to around six or seven degrees at night. That's around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So the EG4 has no trouble in this weather. It puts out a great amount of heat, but I've added another heating system to get us through into the colder weather. So uh, I took two of the 400 watt Canadian solar panels and I stuck them on top of the shed back here. These are working great. I've got to tidy up the wiring a little bit, but uh, these are running into the house to my main battery system, and I've buried this line all the way there. So they are charging during the day while the EG4 is running on solar exclusively, and then overnight I am able to run the EG4 on my battery bank. So I've also got uh, this panel charging a system in the garage, and I've got the little All Powers S2000 out here. Just been playing around with this. I fully killed it last night, so I'm just getting it back charged up. That's for another video. I'll take you inside and show you the batteries. So this is my LV2424. You guys have seen this before, but it's kind of, uh, I haven't made any changes to it for a little while. This is kind of what I've been working with. So I've got four of the 100 amp hour lithium batteries. I've got the Redotos, the Power Queen. I've got an amp air time in the back there. Um, that was actually the first battery I ever bought. Still working great. So this black cable goes to the EG4 mini split, and I'm actually able to unplug it from grid where it is now and switch it over to my off-grid system um, as needed. So the past couple of days, it has been a little bit gray and cloudy. I haven't been able to get the batteries to 100% some days. Um, so I've switched it here and there, but I also have this little uh, 20 amp charger down here. If I make too much extra power, I'm just dumping power into other lithium batteries. But uh, yeah, it's working good so far. We're sitting at around 78% state of charge today, doing about 350 watts, even though it's fairly cloudy out. Um, hopefully we get up to about 90% by tonight. So that brings us out into the garage where I've got another system hooked up. I got this idea after making the test bench for testing batteries and thought, why don't I just leave a system out here 24 seven? And if it gets full enough charge, I can just dump a bit of heat into the house at night via the space heater I've been using in my test videos. So these are charging up. I've had these for a little while. They've been working great. I just haven't done a full discharge test on them. So we're gonna do that today. I've got the usual Renogy 1000 watt. This thing's been putting in a ton of work lately. Um, and I've got the Bouge RV 60 amp charge controller. I will be making a video on this, but I'm just testing it out first. So um, yeah, this thing's been up just running the crypto phones, making me a few bucks a week, but I figured uh, might as well save me a few bucks a week as well in the heating bill. So basically we are just going to let these get fully charged by tonight when things start to cool off, we'll start the test. Usually are good for around three hours of heat on 200 amp hours. So We'll heat up the house into the evening, then overnight the EG4 solar heat pump takes over, uh, running on the other batteries, and just heats the house after things start to cool off once again. So we'll get the test set up, wait for things to cool off a little bit this evening, and we'll get the test started. All right, guys, it's almost 7 p.m. We are going to head out to the garage here in a minute and get the test started. Uh, right now the house is sitting at 68 degrees, and the outdoor temperature is 48 degrees and raining. Perfect October day. So we'll head out to the garage and get things started. Okay, time to get the inverter fired up. We did hit a full charge today, so we are working with 200 amp hours of capacity. Should be good for around three hours, right into around 10 p.m. So we'll keep an eye on the state of charge as we go and get things started. 
This is the space heater we're gonna be using. It has a low setting of 700 watts and a high setting of 1500. I'm gonna be running it on low. I normally wouldn't run the batteries 100% dead. I just set a timer feature for an hour or two and use it that way. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna run these batteries to full depletion and just see how much charge we get out of them. Okay, we just hit the one hour mark and we're sitting at 66.9% battery. So that does put us right on pace for three hours of runtime. Uh, I'm going to grab the thermal camera and we'll take a quick peek at these, make sure we have no hot spots. And as expected, nothing hot, nothing crazy. As you can see, the phones are by far the hottest point. Our battery cables are doing fine. Everything is looking good at the one hour mark. So we'll let them keep running and we'll check in every hour. Okay, it's 9 p.m. We're at the two hour mark. I apologize for the glare on the thermostat. I don't want to turn the hall lights on. My son is sleeping just down the hall, but... The house is at 69 degrees, outdoor temperature is down to 46, so we'll go check the batteries. And everything is still running, looks like we're sitting at 35% state of charge, so we do still have a little over an hour left of runtime on these, or at least we should. Fans are running on the inverter now, but everything is still doing well. The Redoto minis are still cool to the touch, everything's running good, so we'll give it one more hour and we'll check back in. Okay, it's 10 p.m. We're about to head out to the garage and wrap up the test. House is up to 70 degrees, which is nice. And we're sitting at 45 degrees outdoor temperature. Heater's still running good on the low setting at 700 watts. That's about 7,100 BTUs total over the three hours. And it looks like we are down to 5% state of charge. So we'll check back in every couple minutes here and just keep an eye on things. We'll do one more thermal check. Batteries are a little bit warmer than last time, but overall still looking good. Hottest point is the terminal in the back at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so not much temperature in these things at all. Okay, our voltage is nearing the low voltage alarm on the inverter, so I'm going to hang tight here and just uh, be ready to turn it off once the low voltage alarm trips. Still pulling 63 amps with 1.3 amp hours to go. And we just hit the low voltage cutoff at 0 0.5 amp hours remaining, 0.2% left on the shunt. So I'm going to reset the shunt and then put a bit of a lighter load on the inverter just so we can pull the last bit of capacity out without tripping the low voltage alarm. Pulling a nice soft 3.7 amps right now. I just have my little Milwaukee light over here hooked up. So we'll let that run a little bit, pull the remaining capacity. Just using a light load so it doesn't send the inverter into low voltage cutoff. Well, I'm going to call it right there. We just hit the low voltage alarm for the second time. That's usually where I call the test. We pulled a total of 202 amp hours from the paralleled Redoto minis. So that's a great result sitting at 10.7 volts. I don't usually like to kill them to absolute 100%, but uh, that's a great result. So we're going to call it right there. Overall, the Redoto Minis did really well in the test. I've been using these for a while. I just haven't filmed too much of it. And I really do like this size of battery. These are really nice and compact. I'm going to put two of these in my boat. I have a boat. I'm going to use these for the trolling motor. So check out the Redoto website if you're interested. So to finish up the video, I usually come downstairs around this time before I go to bed. Uh, I switch the EG4 mini split over from grid power to inverter power. I don't like to leave this thing on in the evening because it does have a pretty high standby consumption, but I put the uh, mini split on the inverter, turn on the system and just go to bed. I let the mini split take over for the night. I've got a couple timers set for it to come on and off and uh, it's been working great. So we're going for no gas November. I really hope we can get to December without turning on the gas furnace. I think that'd be uh, a pretty good achievement, but I do have a young family, so I'm not going to let anybody freeze. If we have to turn it on, we have to turn it on, but that's the goal for now. So I hope you liked the video. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.